three visitors in one day. The first was Otis Amber, with a letter and another receipt to sign. Chris had pretended to be scared by the boom, but he wasn't really. He had twitched because he was excited about going to the Westinghouse again, even if he hadn't figured out the clues. Then Flora Bombach came to see him. He wasn't nervous at all with that nice lady. She smiles that funny smile because she's sad inside. She once had a daughter named Rosalie. She told him how Rosalie would sit in the shop and say hello to the customers, and how she would feel the fabrics. Mrs. Bombach made wedding dresses, which are mostly white, so she bought samples of materials with bright colors and patterns, because Rosalie loved colors best. Rosalie had 573 different swatches in her collection before she died. Mrs. Bombach said her daughter might have been an artist, if things had turned out differently. What would I have been if things had turned out differently? The third visitor entered. Limping. His partner was limping. Too much excitement, his stupid body was jerking all over the place. Denton Deer sat down next to the wheelchair. Take it easy, Chris. Calm down, kid. I'm not the creature from the Black Lagoon, you know. His partner, a doctor, watched horror movies on television, too. Slowly, arms untangled, legs unsnarled. Slowly, Chris stuttered out his news. Flora Bombach felt so guilty about seeing their dropped clue that she told him one of her clues. Mountain. But we mustn't tell Turtle. Don't worry, the intern said, displaying a bruised shin. Chris laughed, then stopped. I'm sorry. Mountain, hmm? Denton Deer thought about the new clue. If a treasure is hidden in a grain shed on a mountain plain, I sure don't have time to look for it, do you? <coughs> Let's forget the clues. I have something more important to tell you. Don't get excited, okay? Chris nodded. His partner was going to ask for the money. Denton Deer stood. I'll get your toothbrush and pajamas, then we'll go to the hospital. Don't get excited. Chris got excited. How could he explain that what he wanted from his partner was companionship, not more probing, pricking doctors with their bad news that made his mother cry? Listen, Chris, can you hear me? Just overnight. I found a neurologist, a nerve doctor, who works on problems like yours. Operation? No operation. Did you hear me, Chris? No operation. The doctor thinks a new medicine may help, but he has to examine you, make some tests. I have your parents' permission, but no one will touch you unless we talk it over first, you and me together. I promise. Chris grimaced, trying to smile. His partner said talk it over, the two of them, together. They were really partners now. You can... Have m money. What? Oh, the money, later. Here, let me take those, you won't need them in the hospital. Chris clung to his binoculars. Well, I guess you do need them. Ready? Here we go. All of a sudden, he was leaving Sunset Towers, pushed by his limping partner. Maybe Dr. Deer is not who and what he says he is. Maybe he is being kidnapped for ransom. Maybe he's being held hostage. Oh, boy. He hasn't had so much fun in years.